I will start with a mystery because because uh, if in one way or another we are supposed to talk about art, there is something which is uh, frequently said that is that uh, art is a mystery or, or there is something of a mystery uh, with art. At the end, after any possible kind of analysis of the work of art, of uh, meaning of art, or no meaning of art, uh, etc. Something comes again and again that is there is a mystery somewhere. That is, why is uh, Why is Leonardo da Vinci a great artist? What means a great artist? A lot of uh, capacity of um, ability to do that or that, but, but, and in addition, why Leonardo and not and not uh, another one, just, just uh, close to him. Why? And why this canvas and not this other one? Why this piece of music and not this other one? Why this film, not this other one, is a great, strong, Work of art. At least you know, and we all know, that uh, <coughs> there is a very simple criterion of the greatness of the work of art. That is the endlessness of the possible interpretation. If I stand in front of the Gioconda of Leonardo, something um, like five centuries after, I have still something to, to say or not to say, to contemplate, to admire. Even I could say to, in a way, to adore. Adoration is a, is a, maybe a, another word and, and theme about which I maybe I, I, I will speak later. There is something like an infinity of possibilities with the Joconda. If uh, you take, I don't know, you take, uh, I don't know, the portrait of uh, of Louis the Fourteenth by Rigaud, maybe you don't see this painting, but uh, a very striking painting of the of the Majesty of the King. But there is nothing more to say that there is Louis the Fourteenth and. Stop. It is very well done, but there is no mystery. Of course, if I take the Gioconda, this is why the Gioconda is like a kind of um, often exposure of mystery. The Gioconda has a mystery on herself. Herself, if I speak about she as a woman, or on itself, if I speak about the canvas. Malarmé, 
Malarmé, uh, when he wanted to characterize what he wanted to produce, to create himself as what he called the work, which capital, earth, the work, which, uh, which at the same time was for him the book, once again, capital, book, the absolute book. But Malarmé said, this is in, in, a, in a letter, in a letter to Casalis, he said, now I understand everything about the history of art. Everything, yes. This is like other, other declaration of Malarmé, it is a little megalomaniac. <laughs> <laughs> but like it by many artists. Maybe maybe it's something of a megalo money has something to do with a artistic mystery. It is not maybe a, a pathologic megalomania, but uh, it has the appearance of megalomania, but it is a, 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 an over consciousness or an over unconsciousness that not I am doing, but something is going through me, something which is more that I can, um, that I can um, do, plan, produce by myself. Well, that Manami uh, writes, uh, I understand the history of art, there are three times. First time, the Venus of Milo, which is totally unconscious of her own mystery. Venus of Milo, which or who is immediately what she is or what it is. <coughs> this statue, you know, the Venus of Milo, of course. This is, uh, Madame may say that I, I, I like to, to, to give her as her sculptor artist Phidias, but uh, uh, it's not true. Venus of Milo is not for Vienna, Madame knows it, but he, he needs a, a, a name of a great artist. So you know the Venus of Milo, which is this Venus with the broken arms. You know? A Wolfgang. So the Venus of Milo, that is the entire art of the antique, is uh, unconscious of its or her own mystery. It is an immediate mystery. The second time is the Gioconda of Leonardo, which says Malarmé, which was a uh, Mordu, as in Mordu. Bit. Was bitten by the chimera of Christianity. And the Gioconda is partly aware that there is a mystery in her or in it. And she smiles. She has this uh, half mysterious smile, which actually is a characteristic of the Joconda. No. 
if there is something to say, uh, infinitely to say about the Kanda, that is this smile. What is about the smile? So, have consciousness of mystery. And third time, mind, walk. The book, which is, he states, nothing else than the idea of mystery as such and the consciousness of mystery. And mystery as mystery. Mystery in the awareness of being a mystery. What does that mean? <coughs> the consciousness of the mystery, or the consciousness to be the mystery. In a way, it is clear that it is an impossible consciousness. Because to be conscious to be a mystery is to be conscious to be something or some being from which it cannot be a consciousness or clear, total consciousness. But, but, certainly, we don't have to stop with that, with, with this paradox. Uh, on the contrary, I think we, we have to, to try to understand what is at stake with the mystery of art, if it is possible to speak about the consciousness of mystery, or the mystery as consciousness of mystery. That is, in a way, the consciousness of something that is going beyond any consciousness. And when one speaks about the consciousness beyond any consciousness or behind, beyond or, or behind, maybe it's the same thing. Uh, if one has to speak about that, of course, one thinks on Freud, unconscious or unconsciousness that is beyond or behind consciousness. And you know that uh, in the work of Freud, in the whole work of Freud, uh, there is something very, uh, very impressive and very important. That is a statement several times made by Freud that the artist know more than we do. We, we are the psychoanalysts, the psychologists. The artist know more than we do, more about what? Human soul, or, or whatever is the name. Sujet. This psyche or psyche, how do you say it in English? Psyche, psyche, psycho analysis? Psycho. 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 
And then the, the, the Greek name is Psyche. 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 No, the, uh, Psyche. <laughs> which is, is a, a, an object of Freud and which is more than, much more than consciousness, which is consciousness and unconsciousness, which is consciousness involving unconsciousness, and which is maybe more than any other trend or characteristic, which is uh, the motion and emotion of drive. In this uh, uh, perpetual and fundamental motion, so the drive, the perpetual drive, or driving, <coughs> is uh, what Freud somewhere calls our mythology. The drive. He writes that is in the in the text of drive and uh, destin, destin, how it is translated? Destiny, no. destiny, yes, of drives. So in this text, Freud writes his very astonishing sentence: <coughs> drive are our myth and uh, theory of. He doesn't write theory, he writes Lehre, mm, doctrine. Mm. Ah, can't say theory, but besides, it's not theory. It's a joke. Kind of mythology? Mm. No, the, the Lehre, yeah, the Lehre, it's to learn. It's to learn. Doctrine, yeah. doctrine. Yeah. Doctrine, uh, meaning it's not far from theory, but I, I would uh, I prefer to avoid the, the theoretical being abstract and, and um, separate from practical meaning of theory. You know. the, um, so what would say my, my doctrine and. Uh, uh, um, Doctrine of drives is our mythology. This is a very surprising uh, sentence in Freud uh, because it is <coughs> absolute opposite to uh, any claim to scientificity. Hmm. But is as you know. Um, but perhaps as we we never never enough know uh, science was never for Freud the right uh, I would say the right point of reference and Freud understood himself as a scientist only only because he wanted or he needed to take place on the playground of science and to argue that 
he was able to, uh, to say, not to fight, but to, to be competitive if I can, with scientists. But uh, at least starting from a certain point, Freud was himself very aware that what he was doing was something quite different from science. And was that means was not the construction of an object, an object that could be um, taken in the in some way of mathematical, physical, etc. Measure, but was uh, a way of trying to understand and understand them means uh, less to take in a um, construction of a reason than to, to phrase, and to express, to give way to something, something that precisely cannot be taken as an object. And to this uh, register, or way in Freud, uh, belongs mainly this sentence about the tribe as mythology. Because that means the tribe are nothing that I can grasp, take, uh, not even exactly characterize, and even less measure, control, whatever. But uh, tribe is uh, the, the world with which I can try to, to give the world precisely, to give it a way of being said to this, uh, to this uh, Energy, which is the energy of psychic, the energy of uh, going away, desiring, loving, hating, destroying, drive to pleasure, and beyond pleasure, drive to death, etc. Well, and I don't want to stay too, too, too much about to drive before it, but just to say that if on one hand the drives are our mythology, our, our society, so we are the mythologist of drive. On the other hand, the artists know more than we do. And that means artists are those who are able to know, to know something more about this mythology and how can may one know more about the mythology if not by <coughs> practicing this mythology, by being into this, that is by opening the way to the drive and having the, the, the drive uh, making its way, like by drawing, by uh, singing, by dancing, by whatever, by having a form coming out from nothing and from nowhere. A new form, 
a new film showing something uh, that is not to be seen in any other place. And that is to know something about unconscious. Then it means that uh, <coughs> which resist to the rationalistic explanation of Freud himself. And this resistance is designated by the word mythology. What resists and therefore what is a kind of mystery is known by and through or in or as the practice of the artist. Which, and just to say that by, by the side, which goes uh, in one sentence uh, very far, far away from uh, the explanation of the world of art by Freud himself. Uh, when, for example, you know, when he explains uh, the canvas from uh, Leonardo again, the holy Anne and the Virgin and the child. Uh, with a um, child memory of, of Leonardo himself and discover something with Vulture in the painting and, uh, and different things having to do with uh, homosexuality of or in Leonardo, etc. All this, uh, and like, like the explanation with uh, Moses of Michelangelo, etc., uh, etc. Et they still Still, uh, all those explanations of works of art by Freud go to a certain point where they stop, they end, and in a certain extent, nothing is said about the artistic uh, nature. So, of course, it, maybe every, everything is possible. But, uh, Leonardo has been that and that and what one and and then and then is a painting and where where, where is where, where is the, the, the causality strain positive rational causality between I don't know between homosexuality and the painting. There is a silence of the world and the recognition that the artist knows more. That is, when he knows more, knows more about what? Of course, when he doesn't know more about, about his own homosexuality, if it is, or bisexuality, I don't know. You know that the same, the same uh, is true about the Gioconda. Uh, uh, a lot of discussion about is the Gioconda a man or a woman? Uh, or a, a man dressed in woman, whatever. That is not the point. That is absolutely not the point. The point is why is it this painting? Or even, even this is other additional or previous question. Why is it painting and not music? Why is it Nancy and not Monteverdi? And not uh, Bernini? I mean, as a sculptor. <coughs> and already this 
only this question. Why does one become a painter, a designer, a filmmaker, a musician, a singer, um, etc., a poet? Why? Why this, this kind of, uh, of gesture? And, and this gesture as uh, the way a drive is going through. Why? You know, in the history of the green painter, the history which was started uh, by um, Massari in the 15th century, there is a, there is a first story uh, about Giotto, a story which is well known. That is, the young Giotto was a um, shepherd on the land with uh, sheep, and uh, he was not a painter, he was designing on the sand with a piece of wood, and a painter, the older painter, Bramant, was there and <coughs> how this boy uh, makes wonderful drawing, he stops, he said to the boy, you come with me? He goes to the father and says, your boy is a wonderful uh, artist, I take him, I take him with me and I will educate him to, and Giotto become Giotto. Maybe it's a pure legend. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, it's impossible to 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 very well know about that. But the, the interesting fact is that in the lives uh, of Azari, what is the title of the book? Is the, the life of the great painter? In the life of Azari, and later in other books of. The same as the same purpose of other writer. This story becomes a story of many, many great painters, like uh, Michelangelo, like uh, I have five words, maybe. Uh, that is uh, about many painters. It is told that they, as young people without any education, they was driven to, to, to draw. And, and in a way, they can escape. In the story of Giotto, Giotto is just a shepherd. And, uh, everything is uh, quite in other stories. <coughs> the, the young man uh, 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 draw at the school. And he doesn't listen to the, to the teacher, but he draw. Door, so he's punished, etc., etc. So it is a kind of legend, legend of what? But legend of, or oh, if you want, a, a kind of myth. You know? Legend of, or myth of the drive to do, an irrepressible drive, which, uh, which encounters uh, the Intelligence and the judgment <coughs> of an older artist, you know, etc. Et <coughs> I don't know, maybe there are something like 20, at least 20 painters about which the same, the same story comes again and again with, with different, uh, different details. And so this legend or myth, I would say, is the myth about the mythological and mystical fact that to do, but I don't know why it is uh, this legend is, uh, is um, in a way crystallized uh, around the drawing. You know. uh, is it not uh, just drawing, not about color, not about sculpture, not about music, 
maybe maybe there is something very simple with that. That is that to do is the, the most simple gesture. Mm, to the less technical in a way, but, but nevertheless uh, we have we have uh, as well such stories. Um, Differently, but uh, uh, not without any analogy in music. And all those very young composers, like Mozart, Mozart is uh, the main figure of that, but many, many composers uh, have been people able to, 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 to write music at, you know, before, even before, before 10. Even Schumann, for example, uh, Monteverdi as well. So I would say the, the story of Mozart is the, the, the main mythological figure. It's mythological. It's true. It's true. It is true that Mozart was able to record what he listened to the, uh, you know, in, in the holy. Uh, in, in Rome without being able to survive or not. Uh, that's true. That's true. But but how this uh, talent, this capacity not only has been there but developed itself and drove the same uh, the same man, the same soul and uh, the same toward becoming mother <coughs> toward writing the Cosi von Tutte or the Requiem. That is what is not to be explained, and this not so this impossibility of explanation is exactly what the, the legend or the myth, and the, the his, history, but history becoming a legend, uh, expose. Well, with all those uh, ways. We are drawn toward something like a mystery of art, which is not that much the mystery of a genius and a parabolic talent. It is, it is not precisely not a psychological neither sociological nor psychological nor historical nor whatever mystery I would say it is absolutely not a mystery of the person of a subject it is a mystery of an act of a gesture I mean, precisely the gesture of drawing is a, is a, an exemplar of that, because it is a gesture. And the gesture, what is a gesture? The gesture of drawing, but the, the gesture of drawing can be taken as an, um, mm. image, a paradigm, I would say, for every artistic gesture, because uh, writing music, or even not writing, but uh, singing, impro improvising uh, music in any way, is still making a kind of gesture, is still drawing something like a line. You know? so, so a line is going <coughs> in a way, the same with dancing, the same with filming. Uh, <coughs> I should ask to clear about that, but I think 
uh, film, but the film, uh, film is a lot of things, of course. But a, a great film, good film, uh, is uh, necessarily uh, or has necessarily something to do with a line. You know, that is from the beginning to the end, something is going in some way. So, <clears throat> the, the mystery is the mystery of this line. And the line, the line is, um, of course, the line is the line uh, traced by somebody. But somebody, what is somebody? It is precisely a body. Uh, the, the, the somebody named Giotto or Vinci <coughs> or Matisse or Hotsko. So somebody is a body. That is, it is an arm and a hand which operates in a certain way, and at a certain point, this arm, this arm, which of course is not separate from, from, from the whole body and the brain, but is not, is not the pure executor of something that would be in the brain. When, when I, I, I write, if I take a pen and I write something, one can say, in a certain extent, my arm is only the execution of the order of my brain. In a certain extent, because uh, I have my way of writing and this way of writing, <coughs> even if it is not a drawing, if, even if the result is very ugly, is, a, a, is something which escapes to my brain and, and which comes from where? From the unconscious. And where is the unconscious? Aha. Besides, that's a question, that's a mystery. So, the, the, the line, that what we could name the line in a, in a broader meaning as a, as a line for every kind of <coughs> art. The line which uh, which starts as well uh, in a certain way before art or out of art as the line of the of um, presenting oneself of uh, gesturing the, the allure of a body uh, how a body presents itself how it shows itself Think about that and look at, at us, at every people. Uh, each of us has a way of moving, uh, moving, moving the whole body, <coughs> moving the face, uh, moving the voice, uh, which is uh, what we could call something like a line. I, I I come back in Sasphere, I see, uh, for example, Diane and Victor, and I I recognize not only their face, but with much more than the face, the way of moving, of um, the resounding of the voice, and every, everything, everything. This is uh, 
shapes and lines. Well, uh, <clears throat> but in art, what, what happens with art? I would say it happens that uh, this line is no longer the line of a um, um, body presenting itself and entering in different relationship with the other, but it becomes something autonomous, independent thing called drawing, painting, music, whatever. Mm. And I think <coughs> this is, this is absolutely the, the same uh, in every kind of art. I mean, the happening, performance, installation, uh, whatever has to do with this line. Even if you want minimum of line, which is no line, which is a point of like, I don't remember the name, some uh, an, an artist putting some small point of color in a city, point of color, which nobody was able to see unless one showed you know, there is a point there. So that is a gesture, that is a, that is a line, that is an invisible line. The invisibility is, is a can be a character of the line and maybe is all the time a character of the line because at a certain point the line uh, goes out, disappears. And the line of the Joconda disappears somewhere, somewhere. In the back of the Joconda and the out of the Canva and inside the Canva. There is a sentence of Matisse which is a very impressive sentence. He says, <coughs> we have to observe and follow the desire of the line. <coughs> that is not my desire, but the desire of the line. And to follow it, he says, until the point she, the line where she, because the line is a, uh, female in French, uh, the point she wants to disappear. And if I remember, and, and to die. Yeah. This, this sentence is very, very strong. And, and Meaningful, meaningful, full of more than a meaning, uh, meaningful of an over meaning is the line itself <coughs> by itself has a desire or anymore is a desire and to to be an artist to make an artistic gesture is to follow this desire and to be, I would say, to be uh, driven or driven. Uh, driven, driven, uh, to be driven by, by, by this, uh, this drive. Well, and if I say, if I say this, this uh, uh, mystery, this, uh, this point, point, uh, point of uh, own consciousness, own rationality, own, uh, uh, in a certain way, this point of no control or over the control, which at the same time is not is not uh, irrationality and uncontrol and and um, 
everything. You know. Not the n'importe quoi. N'importe quoi. What is n'importe quoi? It doesn't matter. Hmm? It doesn't matter. It, now, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, whatever. Yes. Whatever. But, uh, whatever. Whatever. You know, Duchamp. Duchamp. A certain way of interpreting Duchamp is to say you can't take n'importe quoi. One thing or another. It doesn't matter. You don't have so. Uh, uh, whatever. 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 It is. whatever. So, in the. In the, <coughs> the this is not the whatever. And even the whatever, in the meaning of Duchamp is not whatever. Because uh, in Duchamp, uh, there, is, uh, there is something which uh, corrects and, and changes the meaning of whatever, that is uh, the date. Uh, Duchamp says that artists has to have a date with the, the whatever. Uh, if I don't have a date with this, uh, what is it, cup, with, with this cup, <laughs> I, I will not make a fantasy cup an object of art. So, and the, the, the purpose of Duchamp is not to say simply whatever. You do whatever you want. And uh, <coughs> obviously, uh, one could say whatever you want. But then you have to want something. And what is to want? You have to have your own desire. And what is a desire? Is a, is a, well, but I don't stop with, with to show. But this point, this point, then I think we today, I mean uh, today at the beginning of the uh, 21th century, we know, we know that uh, uh, this is not the place of the genius, the, nor the place of the muse. But, but, I would say, we know even much better that this is not, on the contrary, the place of a kind of causality, of mechanism, of the uh, one. <coughs> Nor is it the place of any kind of intention. There is maybe today a, a, a new problem for the art. And this problem belongs to the to the, the, the climate in which we are, where there is the, the art is for itself uh, an enormous uh, source of question problem what is art is at stake in every uh, uh, work of art today but maybe it was all the time the same you know? it, it, even the sculptor of the Venus of Milo was asking himself what is art and even Vinci was asking himself etc but today this is expressed uh, explicitly at the stake uh, and folk for many reasons but but that makes I think for us more clear than no intention of another uh, kind of coming from another realm than, uh, than art itself can make a work of art. I mean especially political in 
invention. You know how it is, it is uh, frequently said today that the work of art has a political, political meaning, a political intention, political purpose, etc. Well, in a certain way, maybe every, every work of art did have political meaning, intention, etc. Even the Gioconda. Because to paint in a certain way, certain kind of people has to do with, uh, of course, it can, cannot be otherwise, has to do with uh, with a society, the community, but, but to take the Gioconda, what is the Gioconda? The Gioconda is not the Holy Virgin one. It is not, it is not uh, even a, a, a saint person in any way. It is not a princess. And uh, what is it? Unknown or quasi unknown person. And in addition, maybe, maybe, not a woman, etc. There is something political there. Uh, of course, of course, this is political gesture and intention is something that started uh, already a long time before Leonardo and the, the European art started to, to come out from the the church and to come out from the, the representation of the religion and political political in the, in the, in the <coughs> now sense of representing kings uh, battles uh, uh, coronation and that's all but Besides this transformation of, the, of European art at the Renaissance <coughs> has a political meaning of all the transformation of the politics and society and economics, etc. Et at the time. So, political uh, meaning which the, the most frequently their politics is, is a name to, to name, I would say, to name everything belonging to yes, society, economics, uh, uh, power and, and counter power, etc., etc. If today somebody let's say a work of art uh, and um, having to do <coughs> explicitly to do with um, you know, with a war somewhere in Africa or with uh, um, consuming or whatever uh, the intention is there, but the same person could have written something on this topic. He could be an economist, a sociologist, and a, I don't know, a moralist. And a, I can write about ecology. I can make a work Art with uh, living, uh, you know, very small living organism uh, like uh, the, the, the French artist Ernest Pignon. Ernest uh, made a um, shape of human being made of microorganism uh, which are living and uh, those also. Uh, Statues, people are in, in trees, in, in, a, in a park near from uh, where I live in Strasbourg, and they are still living. Mm. Uh, because they don't move, but all, all the microorganisms <coughs> there are living. Uh, 
<coughs> and this is easy. Ecologists propose, but it doesn't say nothing about ecology. It says nothing, and this is, maybe this is the point. There is no work of art that could be entirely translated into a speech. If I can say this means that and that, and if after saying that I have uh, totally translated the work of art, <coughs> the work of art disappeared as such. And on the contrary, the less I can translate, and the more uh, art is at stake. But of course, this is very complicated because uh, uh, <coughs> because the impossibility of translating may itself be a way of translating because I, I can I can <coughs> produce I don't know a mess of of things together and I say ah see you cannot translate. <coughs> Yes, I cannot translate because the thing says you cannot translate. In fact, I, I can't translate at least that. And then, you know, you understand. Well, then I just want to say that we, uh, we have, since a long time already, we have finished with all the symbolic representation of genius, muses, etc. But, but, not only we replace them by any kind of uh, rationality, neither the rationality of the causality the artist is artist because, and the work <coughs> of art is work of art because of that or that. Not this kind of rationality, and neither, no, no, the, the way of explanation uh, which was developed uh, especially by some um, American theorists, the work of art is what is recognized as work of art. If the, Society says this, this is a work of art, then it is a work of art. But there, there is a problem which society, which when society. <coughs> now, in, a, in, a, in France, I would say, especially in France, uh, some cities, but in a long time, some cities like to have works of art on public places and then make command to <coughs> artists and uh, sometimes you say that you, you think hmm, that's not art for me or not great art so for me. But be, be, only only because the, the small society the small community of the, the, the people, the governor of the city, and even even with uh, all this border community of people knowing themselves, and you know, uh, that is a whole socio-economical uh, um, Network which produce something, but it is not an artist. I would say the artist is, a, is a much more the, 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 the last mechanism in 
in this network. Of course, it, it is, is, once again, it is very dif difficult to distinguish, to, uh, I think it's possible to distinguish, but uh, for example, there is the possibility to distinguish, uh, uh, the possibility <coughs> or not to translate or to explain to, I would say, to, to phrase about this work, or the own possibility to do that. And uh, of course, there is, but there is, there is no, no end to that process. There is no, no clear decision possible to make. I can, I cannot say this art is no art. In certain cases. I think I can, in other cases I cannot, because, because uh, it needs time, time and people, much time, many people to uh, grasp, to grasp precisely the quality of mystery of that work or at the end to reduce the work to, to what it is. I would say, you know, in, <coughs> in York we have uh, many works of art of the 19th century, public statues uh, or uh, a lot of Bourgeois painting hanging in the, in, the, in the house of the people, which now we know as uh, works, even even well made, but totally, I would say, uh, closed in their time, and having nothing more to to open to us. Is if I look at, at, a, at a painting of Delacroix, there is something more. If I look at a painting of, uh, <coughs> especially if I think of Delacroix, of uh, other painters of the same time, and especially uh, painter in the Orientalist genre, you know, for all the people at the time of Delacroix, they made the, the trip to Morocco, Egypt, etc., and they painted, uh, painted uh, landscape and uh, people of those uh, countries. And so it was a genre, so orientalist genre. And uh, many of those paintings are, when you see them today, they are documents about the orientalist curiosity. But they uh, mm, don't have the mysterious strongness of the Lacroix. But even more, that can happen by the same painter. I don't know, the La de Lacroix painted a, a lot of, of, uh, of canvas. Some of them are maybe not, not so good, good. The other, what, what means good? Good means uh, maybe you know from De La Croix the mm. well known painting of the, uh, the liberty, uh, liberty going in front of the people, mm. you know, is a woman with a French banner. So it's not a bad painting, but it is a painting which says too much. This is a political, absolutely political painting. Uh, in addition, it uh, may be not, not absolutely uh, I mean, sincere from the heart of the Lacroix. Because <coughs> not, not many years before, the Lacroix was politically uh, absolutely not a Republican. But at the time of uh, 84, I decided it was you know, better to become a Republican. Uh, I don't know, uh, 
emphasize the story, but I, I know that uh, changing his mind a little bit. So the painting says too, too much. Like other orientalist painter of the time says too much, too much about the supposed image of Orient. Well, that all to say that I think that now we are facing, I would say, a, a duty, a philosophical duty, that is to say something else and something more about history about the artistic mystery. Because we, we cannot but recognize that there is something like a mystery. Even if this word mystery is itself uh, mysterious world or uh, the dangerous world. And precisely, I don't want to to uh, make an end with mystery. I don't want to say you, that would be a very poor discourse. You know there is a mystery by art. Okay, then end of the class. <laughs> uh, but what can we say? What can we say more about mystery without without uh, destroying the mystery of the mystery? So for that, I would like to start with the history of the mystery, with uh, what is mystery? Mystery, no, mystery uh, for us was, I don't know now, but I think that uh, in English mystery has been the name of, uh, of the, how do you call that? Uh, and the novel with the genre. Hmm? It's a genre of literature. It's a genre. genre. Like a detective novel? novel. It's a genre. Oh, like a mystery novel. A genre. Novel. Ma mystery novel, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. The, the gender of, of. The genre. Mm. You say the genre. The genre. Yeah. The genre. Yeah, memo. Yes. Yeah. But not the genre, absolutely. That's the am genre. Un genre, un genre. Yes, mystery novel as a, as a genre of novel. Right. That is a novel where uh, the most often in the, in the recent times there is a um, detective you know, who have to discover the mystery of a crime. And uh, <coughs> the it is remarkable that the greatest uh, writer of mystery novel, I mean uh, people like Tashin Hammond, uh, um, wrote some novels where it is very, very difficult to discover the mystery and even, even impossible. I don't know if it is the, the, how it is, the Maltese Falcon and the, uh, the Red Harvest, things like that. There are novels I, I have never understood what happened there. Neither in the, in the, by reading nor by the film or the, some, some of those uh, as well in films. And that, that is, I think, that uh, Ashen Ahmed 
in, in a certain way, not far from, um, I don't know, from people like uh, you know, Faulkner. Faulkner, at least in um, Central, <coughs> hey, hey, the, the, the purpose to write a, a, a story for which there is no really a solution, there is no really an end, and, and uh, not really a discovering of the, the guilty guy. But, 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 anyway, and then maybe later we, we come back to the, to the novel, to the novel in general, because, because maybe, well, I, I say that right now, uh, maybe the novel, uh, which is not, which does not belong to the genre of mystery novel, uh, is all the time a mystery. A great novel, if it is not a mystery in a way, is it a novel? If you, I don't know, if you write, and, and I don't know how to call that in English, uh, this, this genre or this under genre of novel uh, you can buy in the railway station or in the airport. Some, some writer, an American writer, French writer, English writer, certainly German writer too, who are able to, to write a lot, a lot of it. There are many love stories with, uh, with some <coughs> adventures, some kind of mysterious, but uh, not mystery, but better secrets which are to be discovered. And I think it's a, it is the same with, uh, with uh, the, the name of the walls. And, uh, and more recently, what is the, what the story with, with, uh, with the church in Christ? Yeah. 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 Uh, Roberto Eco, yes, and after, after the name of the walls. Mm -hmm. The Pendle of Foucault. Hmm? The Pendle of Foucault. Ah, yes, the Pendle of Foucault. Uh, no, I, I did not write it. And, uh, no, and um, not from Echo, but. Um, ah. Lack of memory. Uh, you all know that. Uh, ah, Da Vinci Code. Ah, yeah. ah okay. <laughs> That which he got is, is maybe is a, the new is a new paradigm of uh, the mystery novel because it is it's, it's this time it is a historical metaphysical etc novel but all all the category of novels are uh, I would say mystery novel if. Want to say that, but in the way there is a secret, and at the end, the secret will be discovered. I think, on the contrary, the great novel, like, uh, like, uh, I, I don't know, all the novel of Faulkner, of Proust, of Thomas Mann of Balzac, of Henry James, of uh, Conrad, uh, Malcolm Lowry, etc., etc. All those novels are, and without secret, the question is not to, to discover the secret. What is, what is the secret uh, in, in some tribe, for, for example, or all the novels of Faulkner, there is no secret. Or, or in a certain way, the secret is obvious from the beginning. For example, that there is, in, in, there is uh, the internal monologue of an idiot. Well, the, the, 
There is a secret and no secret. The secrecy is the idiocy of that idiot. But the secret is evident, and I, I don't have to, to, to ask myself at all where are the clue. There no secret, no clue. But what? A story, a novel, and a work of art. But there is there a mystery. There is a mystery that is that precisely this novel never says any kind neither of rationality that is it is not written to explain or to narrate, I don't know, the life of somebody here. To Nor to discover uh, something that would be hidden. In a certain way, the mystery is precisely that there is a novel. And that there is a novel has at least at least one um, implication. I would say when the novel starts, it has already started. And when it ends, stops, it goes further. That is, when I, when I well, understand what I, what I mean, when, when I read, um, I don't know, I read a, a, a technical book about, <coughs> I don't know, a book uh, about computer. I read the, the manual for my computer. It has a starting point and ending point. There is not nothing before. There is supposed to be nothing before. Everything is done to to help me from the starting point. It is written. You take your computer. You open it. You take, uh, take this and this. Make battery inside. Etc. Now think about beginning of novels. <coughs> you know the beginning of the of post the research, we don't get post um, a, a long time I did go early to bed. A long time, I did. so we are already in the middle of, of something. I would say in the middle of the action. There is no action. <laughs> just going to bed, but it's a long time. So I start the, the end of the research is a little more complicated. I agree because the end of the research is more to do with the theoretical text in a certain in a certain. And, and, uh, and you take the end of the uh, novel, uh, I, I like especially the end of Under the Volitano, of Malcolm Lowry. If you remember, at the end, the consul, is it, is it called consul in English? I don't know, because I think uh, consul is uh, uh, so jump into the volcano. And he, he falls into the volcano and he, he screams. It's an enormous, and terrible scream, resounding in the crater of the volcano. This is a resounding, like a kind of echo. And, and the last sentence is after him. 
and now I am translating the French in the English of Lois and that's awful. But uh, after him, somebody um, jeté uh, through hmm? through do uh, a dead dog <laughs> in the in the world time. Last sentence. An end. So that an end. Dead dog under the dead man who has been the hero, the main person of the novel, but no end in another way. No end. It is dead over dead. So in, in the kind of infinity is a scream and the dead dog. And you can't uh, you, you can't do that with, with every uh, beginning and ending of novels. It is very interesting to 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 analyze, yes, analyze and, and at the same time to I would say to contemplate how uh, it is it is written in order to open a time before and or time after. Or, or when it starts with a, with an eye, an eye, an eye nobody knows. So the beginning of as I lie dying from Faulkner. I come back from from the, Lazarus. Hmm? I come back from the dead Lazarus. Ah, oh, you know that. By the heart. So I. What is the I? The I. I. Oh, if I say I, that is I am here for the first time, but I was already here. You have to know me because I say I. Well, so that is, and maybe we will stop there. But, uh, the first point could be this one. A novel is a mystery or has to do with mystery precisely because it is without the very beginning and the very end that is it is to say purely and totally in the action in, in a way without end and maybe mystery is uh, all the time infinite Well, I think we can take the break. This kind of space time, which is not in the exteriority of the geometrical space and chronicle or chronological time, this simultaneity is not is not a, how to say, is not an immediate totality, is not only one thing as a, as a, I can say, <coughs> can say that, uh, yes, that in a way, cup, is one thing, it's only one thing. If I take the, the, the advertising for all my <laughs> this is one thing. It, because one thing, this, this, this totality, the immediate totality of the cup is given by its use. It is made to drink something, so to take some liquid inside and to drink of it or to, or to, to Take it. So this is not this kind of, I would say, simple and, and not moving totality or unity. In a way, it is not unity or it is a, 
complex unity. It is a unity moving in itself, moving and, and then uh, having different cases and different times, but not in the way of the exteriority. Yes, I go from one place to the other inside the painting <coughs> and I can say I go from one place to the other in the piece of music like if, uh, if we think of an orchestra because it's more clear but it's the same with a single voice but think of an orchestra you listen to an orchestra and even if you are not a musicologue, if, if not, even if you are not very able to distinguish if uh, how many violin are there here, is there the oboe that is playing now, or the clarinet, or both, or even if, if that all is difficult for you, you are hearing the whole, and you are going from one would say from one plan to the other. Uh, there is this, uh, if you take the oboe apart, of you, 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 you take three violin apart, and you, and you will feel the difference, of course. And you know, this is the same with a single voice. Because in one voice, there are different, that's called harmonics, which resounds. Uh, each with the other and each uh, in, um, in accordance and in discordance with the other. It is, it is, you know, it is uh, physically, acoustically very complicated, a, a single sound. It's very complicated. And uh, each sound has what is called uh, what do you say in English? The time? Timber? Timber. 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 And the timber, you know, timber, which has become a, such an important um, concept of meaning in the modern contemporary music, timber is nothing else than the very peculiar way, the different parts, different harmonic and inharmonic parts of one sound are resounding together. So you have the timber of, of course, the timber of the trumpet and the timber of the cello are not the same, but the timber of one trumpet and the other trumpet are not the same, etc. And this is, this is why a musician, a player of an instrument, uh, pays so much attention to the choice of his or her instrument, why he or she likes this, this violin or this piano more than the other one or this kind of violin or piano, etc. Uh, uh, and each, each uh, player has <coughs> or her peculiar way to even to play, to play, to do, then to, to, to make some gesture, to, to, to put a finger on the, touching the piano, etc. Or, or the lips to, to play a boy, for example, or clarinet, which is very, very different in most cases, etc. So, by, I would say by all the way we can enter the presentation and the execution of a piece of music, but it, it is the same, the same with painting, but, um, we find a, a kind of complexity which, uh, let's say, at first glance, 
is a simultaneity, a totality, a unity, but, but let's say at second glance, but it is a second. First and second are joined together. Uh, reveals itself as complex, as made of difference, internal differences, and, and, and that's the important thing, between those differences or are the play of those differences, there is all the time something like an action. There is a displacement that is going from there to there. There is, there is something that, uh, this is why I, I, I stay uh, while with the music, uh, something for which the resounding in the music uh, seems to me very, very uh, like a paradigm. The resounding is the sound is nothing without resounding. The sound is by itself resounding. But if you want the, 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 for example, the color, the color in painting is as well a way of resounding. What is it? No. Every, every, every painter knows that. What is red? Red doesn't exist. No blue, no yellow. But there is this red, this blue, this. Yellow, which is made from, from the kind of, uh, of matter I will take uh, as a first matter to, for making my painting, or the choice I made between, uh, if, I, if I paint with acrylic, I will take this kind or this kind. Produce, and then I will mix with other. And, uh, and if I if I paint with oil and with uh, which maybe today no, 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 many people do, do but uh, uh, I will choose a, a, a lot of things. That the better uh, choice everything. There's a, not only the the basis of the color, but uh, what I, I have no no terms is in English. So the, the, for example, if, if he paints not with oil, even with oil, but uh, even more uh, what is called tempera, and uh, for which uh, each painter in the time at least did have his or her own secret. I do. I do that with, uh, I don't know, some is eggs with some kind of water, some, and uh, etc., etc., to, to mix uh, the color and, and so to, to get what? To get, uh, once again, a certain resounding of, we take another, another name, not to stay in the, sound world to, to produce a vibration. Yeah. Maybe vibration is not, not too much hard work because vibration is a, is a physical term which is a, which belongs to to sing and to color as well as to sound uh, as well as to moving in dancing. So, vibration. Vibration, vibration, what is it? Vibration is, is perhaps a, 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 a name for the simultaneity in the moving or the mobility in the, uh, in the present of something. So, I 
information and is a name for the, the type of action of moving which is proper to the work of art and which has to do with so, the mystery. The mystery now, if we come back to it in the antique world, because the word mystery comes from there. And uh, it is it is even a case of uh, the use of the world uh, almost without, I would say, without any uh, conscious knowledge for us today that when we say mystery, we are using a Greek word uh, almost without translation. Mystery, mysterion, this is a Greek word. And uh, this Greek word uh, between the Greek and us became as well a Christian word. And if we did not lose any Christian memory, uh, we know that uh, Christianity names the mystery of the Trinity, of the Incarnation, Redemption. So it is, it is a word well known, very much used in the religious tradition as well as the antique polytheist as the monotheist tradition. And we use this word, but, but we don't pay attention to what it did mean. And what did it mean? Mystery in the antique in the process of an initiation. Mystery didn't mean the, the secret to be discovered at the end of the initiation, but the process. The mist, the mist was the, the, the one who entered the initiation under the guidance of the priest. His or her name was a beast. At the end of the process, for example, in the mystery of Eleusis, I don't know how to pronounce it. The mystery of Eleusis has been the most uh, well known in the Greek world. At the end of the mystery of Eleusis, something was discovered to the beast, but uh, the beast, who before did have a, a veil on the eyes, was uh, so the veil was taken out, and the beast became the epoch. Which means the one who sees out the value optical, the same old. So the, the mystery was an action because the initiation takes a, a certain time uh, and sometimes it has not made in one day but uh, several days and even. One part, one day, and uh, no, several weeks after the later, another part, etc. And at the end, something was discovered that is, the, the mist um, uh, did, uh, did receive the right to see what was 
previously hidden. <clears throat> so in that meaning, the mystery is an action, an action with an end this time, of course. And the end is discovering something which was before secret. But but we, we have to come back uh, uh, a little later about this discovery. But first, first the mystery itself is a process of the initiation. It is it is not the initiation as a, I don't know the value if you want the value of the initiation is not is not simply not at all, simply in the permission given to see. It is not, it's not like, like we would say today, you are too young to see that, then, then you have the permission. That is, uh, you are under 12, you have not the right to see this movie. You are over 12, you have the right. Where is the initiation? That is the question. Uh, besides, this is, this is very, very new question uh, today for us that we are a society without initiation, without or, almost any kind of initiation. <coughs> not, not, maybe, maybe not <coughs> even for the sexual initiation, which did play a certain kind of role in the not such a, a long time ago. So, it's just to say that the, the first point, the mystery uh, uh, consists in the movement, in the initiation as a process. It takes time and it has to do with uh, several um, Épreuve. Épreuve, 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 épreuve. And uh, you have to, to do something and to. Are you, are you able to overpass? Pass a test. Test, like a test. Task, yes, test. task. Test. 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 Yes, if you want a test, yes. But a test, yes. Um, may, maybe it's the same same word uh, uh, in English, but I would say that uh, in the test, in the test, uh, uh, for, for my understanding, there is only a, a kind of control of your ability to resolve maybe certain logical challenges. 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 Uh, challenges. Challenge. Challenge is. Uh, uh, are you able to do that? Uh, that is very difficult. But that's yes, that's that difficult. has to do with challenge. But in the épreuve, there difficult. is something, something uh, uh, painful, the pain, and uh, and uh, liquid with anguish. You know, like a trial. Like to, hmm? trial. Trial. Yes. Yes. Real. Yes. A trial. Yes. So, like like going going through the darkness. Total darkness, or or even worse, so going uh, through fire, through water, 